Hi everyone, Rich Crescenti here with another in our series of videos making music with Melodyne. And today we're going to be focusing on making effective vocal doubles. And more specifically, creating those vocal doubles when a, a doubled vocal track was not recorded in the first place. Right, so there are a lot of different ways that you can approach creating vocal doubles from scratch. Uh, a lot of that is going to depend upon the way all your tracks were recorded to begin with. Uh, it's going to depend upon the material that you have available to you. Now, one of my favorite ways to create vocal doubles is to usually take my alternate takes, you know, the second best takes, and build a double from there. Uh, and so I picked this session that we're dealing with today for a couple of different reasons. One, it's super fun. This is a, a band from Brooklyn called Cult of Chunk. It's kind of a side project band for people that are in a bunch of other projects that I happen to really love. It's very lo-fi. It's very silly. It's very fun. It's very anything goes. And the recording session matched that. If you look at the screen right here, you'll see that the way that we recorded this was the band just went in and did whole take after whole take after whole take live without a click. So we've got lots and lots and lots of different versions of this song right here, but each song only has its main basic tracks. Now, if you look at this right here, what I've got is this main keeper track, right? And so the other reason I wanted to use this particular song for this session was to show you how easy it is to use Melodyne to create vocal doubles. I don't have a vocal double recorded for this, but what I do have are all of these other vocal takes from other versions, right? Other takes of that song. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and comb and find one that I like and then clear out this session of everything except the main keeper and pick this other one vocal track and turn it into an effective double. Okay, and we're back. And so now what I've done is I've got this track going and I've got a little mix of it right here, and all I've done is taken that alternate vocal take and placed it in right here. And all I did was make sure that the word, that the, the phrase, begins at the exact same time. Now, it is a totally different vocal performance from a different take, so it is going to be off. It's not going to match up. But by using Melodyne, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that you can use to take a vocal that was even recorded at a slightly different tempo and really bring it in and turn it into an effective double. Okay, so let's open up Melodyne right here, right? And as you can see, I've got my vocal in here and my vocal double as well. I also brought in some guitars and bass so I could get good key and chord information. But here we see the vocal for this track. Uh, and I have done a, a little bit of pitch correction on this just to make this uh, work a little bit better with the song. And now this is a perfect example of when we might use the orange blobs and the gray blobs, right? Really, really useful. A reminder, the orange blobs you can edit, but the gray blobs can't be edited. They are there for visual reference only. So since I've already edited and got the lead vocal the way that I want that, I'm gonna set that to the gray blob, and I'm gonna set my vocal double to the orange blob. Okay, perfect. Now let's take a look here. Now right out of the gate, I see a couple of things that I want to address. And the first thing is, let's give this a listen and we'll see what it sounds like. Well, I am feeling just fine, but I can't sleep at night. Okay, now we can hear that it's off, but we're going to go in and fix that. But I see a couple of things here where the, the notes were all sung the same, and we see a place where on this double, the note dropped down. We see another place over here where the note dropped down and it doesn't match the lead. And that tells me that there may have been something off a little bit in the way that Melodyne captured this information. And this can happen with raspy or throaty or vocals sometimes. So let's go into note assignment mode. And this is very easy, right? We can see right here that Melodyne says, you know, we think it's this note, but it also could be this note right here. And this is when you see a big drop in a note but don't hear one, that usually means that it needs you need to go into note assignment mode and just make some corrections. Remember, note assignment mode is how Melodyne interprets the data. So if you're ever editing and getting some results that are less than stellar, oftentimes it's something needs to be tweaked in note assignment mode. 
This is easy to fix. I can just come over here and double click on this shadow and say it's that note and double click on this shadow and show that it's that note there. Okay, now we can come back over here and we can take a look at this vocal. We can see that some of this pitch needs to be corrected right here, right? So it's pretty easy. I'm just gonna come over here to my pitch tool, make sure that I am gonna put this into key so that it's very easy to just double click and snap these to the note that we want them at, snap that there, and bring that down there, snap here, snap here. I often prefer to go in and change uh, the pitch before I go in and change the timing, right? We see that this note should be here, We've got a note right here that we see is actually two notes in the original vocal track. We'll deal with that in just a little bit. Let's bring this note down to here. Pitch correction and bring this one here. Here. Just lots of little pitch correction right there, just sort of nudging everything into place. Okay. So now that we've got that right there, we've got the pitch the way that we want this. Now what we can do is go and adjust the timing, but I see something else that's throwing me off a little bit right here, and that is this note where we see the blob and the pitch line above it are very, very, very disconnected. This is something that is, is rare. This does not happen a lot, but this usually is another sign that we need to go into note assignment mode and fix this right here. And this is often something that needs to be done with our note separations. Uh, usually it means that the note separation itself was not done at quite the right time. So let's go in and change some of that just a little bit. Bye. Let's see. I bet if I cut this note right here. Ah, there we go. And that's what it was, right? There was some gasping or some throatiness that was throwing that off. And by correcting that, now we've got a note blob and a line that match up. Now this is gonna respond better to pitch correction in the first place. Okay, great. So I can come in here and move that down there. Nice. Now I wanna adjust my timing. Now sometimes when we got working with vocal doubles like this, it is difficult to see one on top of the other, right? And so this is where this button right over here that's called spread unison tracks comes in very handy. All it does is spread out your visual reference for this right here. It doesn't change the pitch, but it moves one of the tracks up and make it very easy to see what's going on. Now I can come in and adjust some of this timing. I'm gonna make sure that I don't have grid mode on. I don't. And I can just make sure that all of these line up so that these notes all start and stop. One performance is just like the other. Now, this is something that can easily be pushed very, very far or left a little bit loose. There are a lot of factors that are gonna come into how tight you're going to make this right here, right? And a lot of it's gonna do, depend, it's gonna depend on the genre that you're dealing with. It's gonna depend on what sounds good to you. It's gonna depend upon the song and what feels right. There is no right or wrong answer for how tight and how perfect to make these. There's just gonna be what you think sounds good. So all sorts of creative flexibility. Okay, now in the remainder portion of this vocal, uh, we can see that again, because this was from a different take, uh, it's almost all off because it's a different tempo. These were recorded live without a click. So what I'm going to do is just grab all of them like so, and just with my time up, just nudge them over so that they're all a little bit closer. Great, now we can go through, make sure that they're all starting at the same time, and we can do the exact same thing, right? I can just go through. Now, here I see two notes in the original vocal and one note in the double. Now, if you ever have to separate notes, my preferred method is to go into note assignment mode. Uh, it tracks better if you're ever gonna do any kind of exporting audio to MIDI, uh, and it's just, again, you're telling Melodyne this is two different notes, so treat it like two different notes. Now, the best way to normally do this is to go into the note separation tool and increase the strength of this potential slider right here, right? This slider right here kind of adjusts how many of the potential note starting points there are, whereas the left side of this, the actual slider, adjusts the actual number of sliders. So I'm gonna take my potential sliders and move them up and we see it really didn't give us any additional note starting points right there. So no big deal, I can just go back into edit mode, come over here to my note separation tool, and I'm just gonna separate those two notes right there. 
and this very easily. Now I can uh, take my timing tool and tighten this up just a little bit so that one note matches the other. I'm going to tighten up this performance right here. Same thing. Same thing here. I'm going to scooch that over. That looks pretty good. That also looks good right there. This note right here, I'm going to move so that it matches that one. I'm going to move this one so that it matches uh, this right there. Just some general cleanup for how we want to treat these things, right? I can make this match that and tighten everything up. Get this note right here. Sometimes it'll take a little bit of extra work. Again, two totally different performances. So what we're dealing with here is a very, very unique situation and we'll still be able to make it work. Now, here is a perfect example. Look at this. Here we see that the original vocal, Melodyne thought that this was one note. And in the double, Melodyne thinks that this is two notes right here. Okay, so I want it to behave more like one note. So we can go into note assignment mode and I can come over here to my note separation tool and just eliminate that and turn that into one note right there. Great, so now when I go back over here, if I have to do any moving or stretching, it's much easier and much more cohesive. Okay, cool. So we've gone through right there. Now we can turn off our spread unison tracks, right? Go back to our Beginning, let's do a little bit of pitch correction. Here's another one where I want to separate this note right here. I'm going to separate it just like that. And then just time for a little pitch correction here and here, here and here, here. Let's bring this one down to there. There are a couple places here. Another tool you might use would be to come to your amplitude tool and make sure that this one matches the other one, right? This is a question again of how far you want to bring this and how tightly you want these to match. Okay. This is a case where I may decide afterwards I want to change this lead vocal and bring that lead vocal up there and then come back to my double, bring my double up there as well. So just lots of ways to tighten this up along the way. Again, how far you want to go with it is entirely up to you. But now when we listen to both of them together, what we get is... Well, I am feeling just fine. Okay, cool. And if we listen to this uh, in context of the song, we get... Well, I am feeling just fine. But I can't sleep at night. Okay. Now, don't forget to listen in context, right? Because how tight these vocals are, what sounds good or bad in isolation might be totally changed when you listen to the entire rest of the song. The whole song and the context is how people are going to be listening to it. So make sure you're not always just working in isolation. It's easy to lose track of the plot if you're only listening to the vocals. Okay. So let's do a quick bonus tip right here. And that is, I'm gonna to come to this vocal double. And oftentimes on a double, if the timing isn't exactly right on the sibilance, right? It can be a little bit blurring. So we want the, the power of the consonant being doubled, but oftentimes the sibilant information being doubled can, can blur the, the attack a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is select all of my doubled vocal right here and come to my sibilant balance tool and just bring all of those sibilants down just a little bit, right? I'm just gonna make those all a little bit softer right there. And now when we listen, we get... Well, I am feeling just fine. Yeah, that sounds cleaner to me. It's still got all the power, but we've gotten rid of that blurriness of extra S's and T's and other hard consonants that are starting at the same time. Okay, so one more extra bonus vocal tip, right? If I was looking at all of these on these double vocals, one last thing I might want to do is come to my pitch modulation right here. And because the pitch modulation is pretty wild and because this is double, I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Now you could make it flat overall, but we're not really looking for flat overall. That tends to sound wonky and bad. So I'm just looking to even it out 
a little bit, right? And when we listen to this, we get... Well, I am feeling just fine. Nice. All right. I'm liking the way this is starting to sound right there. So here's the bonus vocal tip, right? What I might do is take this vocal double and I'm going to duplicate it. Right? And I'm just going to duplicate everything about it and close this for a quick second right here. So you'll see that we are now looking at two of these that are absolutely identical. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to relabel this one instead of vocal double duplicate, which is a total tongue twister. I'm going to call this my vocal triple. And I'm going to take my vocal double and pan it to the left and my vocal triple and pan it to the right. All right, so now we've got my vocal, and I'm going to move this vocal double up. We've got my vocal, my vocal double, and my vocal triple. Now, by coming to my vocal triple right here, right, I have this really interesting thing that we can do. Now, if you look, the modulation on this, it's not going to sound any different right now. By just taking the doubled vocal and panning it hard left and hard right, you don't get anything, right? Absolutely identical signals panned hard left and hard right just give you mono because there's no difference in the stereo field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these and come to my modulation tool and bring it, instead of bringing it flat, what I'm going to do is drag it entirely in the opposite direction, right? So all of the little swing ups and swing downs are now coming from the other side. So we're going to get the exact same timing, but the inflections are going to be opposite of each other, which if you listen to it, what we get is... Nice. I like that. It's a nice stereo spread. It gives a little bit of a chorusing effect. We get good power from a vocal double. We just took and out of thin air created effective vocal doubles using Melodyne. I hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks.